What's up everybody, it's your boy Joe, coming to you with the very first episode of the new Overkill Everything channel. Now, you guys are going to see a lot of the vehicles and the projects that we have going on that you guys have seen in a lot of other YouTubers' videos, but now you get to see it right here at the source. So, the first thing a lot of you guys are going to be interested in seeing is, of course, my very own precious Drift Fox. So, the Drift Fox, we're going to run a little montage for you guys right now. In that montage, you can see that the Drift Fox is absolutely crazy, and what it is is absolutely, it's it's it it it's kind of terrible. It's it's kind of terrible. Why? Because we haven't had a chance to really put enough time into engineering and structuring the vehicle the way it needs to be done. So, what we made sure that we did this time around was take a little bit more time to engineer something that's going to work. The vehicle's been plagued with some issues that it had from previously when it was done and carried over with the new setup. And we kind of just wanted to put something together as an exhibition for you guys to enjoy over there on Hello Jensen's channel, also our boy uh, Dab Squatch. And you guys have loved it to death. So I've decided to invest more into the money pit and we're going to be doing some extra stuff. So we're going to run on over there. You guys are going to see it and see exactly where we're at and what we're doing with the entire Drift Fox. But when we do, you already know, if you're at overkill, you just, you just, there, there's, just there's just a lot of things that you're just going to see. Just, you know, 900 horsepower packages on wide body, red interior, red eyes, 900 packages on TRXs, Unknown horsepower levels on ridiculous track hawks that are faster than the track hawks you are familiar with. More OP 900 Hellcats right here, blue wide body, and the list goes on and on because you know it's overkill everything. Isn't it overkill everything? Overkill everything. You you see it. You see it. Not only this though. Hold on, wait. Okay, okay. He was he was pulling something up, but I, there he goes. There it is. There it is. There it is. You got it. You got it. You got. You guys already know. It's it's a family affair. We always with it. You guys know when it comes to NorCal, Hellcats, Trackhawks, Scat Packs, Evos, Skylines, Mercedes. This is the spot to go. Isn't that right, Jeff? Yes, sir. You guys see Jeff's new box? Look at Jeff's new box. This isn't pink, guys. This is this is pink. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, Jeff. We're proud of you. We're proud of you, Jeff. All right. So, projects galore. Built motor. Going in here. Check out this beauty. More built track hawks. Evo action. Skyline. And, of course, more TRXs because why not? And the truck that started it all for Dodge. We've got the SRT-10 because it's overkill everything. <laughs> of course it's pro charge. So we're gonna get into what you guys wanted to see. And it's right here, baby. This is the Drift Fox 2.0 build. It is nasty. It is incredible. And it's exactly what we were hoping for it to be on the first time around, but we were having fun. You guys enjoyed it. It looked like a crazy robot steampunk setup. But this time, the gloves are off, and we're really going to show you what we can do with 1337 Fabrication, which is the fabrication side of the Overkill family. Check out our boy Stackhouse, the myth, the man, the legend, 1337. You guys get really familiar with that. Get really familiar with that logo because. This man breeds nothing but excellence. As you guys know, you guys saw the way this car used to look. Um, you know, it was thrown together as a quick project. And it was obvious it was thrown together as a quick project. And we were able to turn it into something fun that you guys could enjoy. But in doing that, of course, we had to come back and really change things up. So what has been changed on it? We're going to go into detail a little bit here. So the original version 
We'll go ahead, shout out to my editor, Dab, go ahead and sit something right here. We want to see what it used to look like. And now we're going to see what it looks like now. So we finally have the crash, the crash beam or the bash bar as they call it on the front end. That was something that we were glad we even made it through the parts of last season because one hit and the entire front end of this vehicle was going to be done. Now, Marcus, you changed the front end of this thing how many times already? Uh, probably like three. Three? At least three. Yeah. At least three. So I cut the original stuff that they had, and then fixed all the imperfections. Pretty much. Exactly. So as you guys see now, I know you guys love the steampunk little loop that we did with the setup but the issue with that of course is it was exposed it had the pipes hanging here off the side which means that if we ever got any type of side impact or frontal impact the intercooler the piping and all that stuff was going to go bye bye but hey we didn't care we were just going to build it again but since we have this iteration that we're trying to make it to winter jam fingers crossed but we've really gone the same route that we do in our actual vehicles that we do for performance so this is less show and more go but in the same way, it's more show because it's even prettier than ever before. Marcus, tell us what we got going on here with this uh, lower intercooler piping that we got coming off this turbo. Ooh. Help. <laughs> Pie cut heaven. And then that's like some cheap metal. But I'm going to make it work. So we've got this set up here. As you guys have kind of noticed... Um, unlike most setups, we made sure that these were actually mirrored turbos. That way it has that nice symmetry that I love oh so much. And I annoy the heck out of all the guys by making them redo things if it's not perfectly straight. But you guys see the beauty in it. All these pie cuts are made so we can make this really tight radius from the intercooler straight up here into this compressor housing. And, of course, duplicated over here on this side. My boy, Marcus. So on this setup, give us a little bit. Give, give us give us the fabricators touch you know me and you when we talk fabrication and stuff like that we see the beauty in all these things while we're designing and putting our brains together but other people might not know just how crazy this setup really is go ahead and go ahead and break it down for them all right for starters i started with a straight piece of two and a half inch aluminum tubing and had to pretty much get that pie shape that shape had to be like extremely tight like the radius on it had to be tight so hand cut all this all those tubes oh my god hours work you don't, you don't seem happy about that it was fun marcus yeah it was fun we love this stuff yeah, i love it we love cars cars are fun it's not that our hobbies have turned into work and we hate them it's just you know hard work is hard work yeah and uh you know for those that no fab you guys definitely see the level of fabrication that's gone into this now the previous project actually i believe this was before you joined the team um i'd flown Mar marcus out so the story uh how we actually had met um i'll give you guys a rundown we actually have one of my other cars here uh behind the drift fox uh, that you guys are also going to see in the drifts in the not drift series but the race in our different series we're gonna have, we have a bunch of different cars we have the twin turbo Lambo. We're doing the twin turbo build on the Kill Marrow. We've got the twin turbo Nitrous Trackhawk. The twin turbo. <laughs> Everything twin turbo. But this one only has one turbo in it. It's really, really big. So I'm going to flip this camera around. This right here is Jon Snow. So this used to be my street car that I used to race in. It's a complete sleeper. Used to have a 2.4 liter with a 6466. I guess I could tell everybody the setup that had it because none of you guys beat me in it. But that was an absolute beast of a setup, but it was really simple. Um, this car was nicknamed Jon Snow, AKA King of the North because you know, Jon Snow the bastard, he just looked like a regular old guy in a black coat, but you know, he turned out to be the main character of the story, and that's exactly what this car was. So this iteration that I had planned was supposed to be something super crazy and over top. What I wanted was to take this vehicle 
and not have to cut anything off of it. I wanted the stock radiator support, the stock look, all that. I didn't want to have to remove any of that stuff and at the same time have a setup capable of running, well, let's say faster than eights. We're not going to get into that. We'll get into this build later on. But our goals for this thing is to at least be as fast as the shop GTR build, which you guys are going to see as well, which is absolutely insane. The story behind this body for those of you guys who are not familiar with the 463 world shout out to dave walmer aka macgyver and myself we've both been able to have the privilege of piloting you know holding uh the 1g record uh in the talons and the gallants the 35r the 3065 which is a 3582 setups and this vehicle was a big part of that back in history we have a lot of great uh, DSM and Fab Guy still out here in California. Shout out to my boy Ted Marquez, still doing his thing down there in the Bay Area. Um, but I didn't want to tear up this car because it had sentimental value, and everybody just trashes these things and tears them apart. And they thought it was crazy, but guess what? Good luck finding a Talon for less than ten to fifteen thousand. So all this work done in house here by our boy Marcus, aka Stackhouse, thirteen thirty seven Fab. We have that giant 70 series turbo stuffed here on this four cylinder setup, 60 millimeter wastegates, full custom six inch. It's six, we went six inch, right? Yeah, six, yeah, six inch intercooler, full custom forward facing manifold, intercooler piping, catch can, customized banjo, a low profile style uh, breather ports, and Man, not I mean the, the the plates for the the coolant system and the freaking fuel cell. Uh, it's it's it, this thing's caged out full cro full water pump setup, crow molly twin fuel rail. This thing is going to be an absolute beast, and this will be on the channel as well, you guys. I'm telling you. Shout out to everybody else. I love everybody else's channel. You see me on everybody else's channel. Shout out to that. But. Now I get to show you guys how much fun we have here at Overkill. guys are going to see some crazy 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 things and the drift fox is going to be among those so as marcus said he went out here we finally have a bash bar on this thing we were fortunate enough to make it through last season without jensen running to the wall shout out to jensen good job uh we appreciate that uh i mean we didn't get a chance for it to stay on the freaking track long enough because it kept overheating but that's another thing that's been addressed and I don't want to reveal exactly right now what happened, but as you can see, the radiator is no longer right there. And that means that the radiator is going to be in the back. Now, as we slide over here to the back, some of you guys have seen back here, this is the way the fuel cell was set up before. Yes, I don't like it, but yes, it will get changed, but it works for now. I've already got way too much money into this car for something that's not bringing in any type of income but is strictly used for entertainment for you guys then i'm gonna at least try to hold on to something on this thing that actually works the way it's intended to so as long as the fuel system is doing what it needs to do we're doing just fine as you guys know this setup is roughly it ranges in between 600 to 800 horsepower depending on what track it is and we really shouldn't need to turn it up higher than that even though those of you guys familiar with a 6.0 twin turbo fox body setup this car push could reach well over 1200, 1400 horsepower, but we're never going to need any of that. So this fuel system is going to work just fine. Eventually, we're probably going to, you know, lower the fuel cell, move this whole thing back here. But we have a little bit of a time constraint. So you guys see this radiator right back here. Marcus went ahead. As you guys know, we had to do a lot of upgrading to the entire structure of the vehicle. The cage and everything that was in it was unfit. It wasn't up to snuff. It wasn't really doing anything, and it was probably more hazard than 
it needed to be versus not even having a cage. But Marcus was able to knock that out when he came out here last time. And, um, you know, that's, that's, that's exactly what he was able to do. Like I said, when he came out here last time to put the Drift Fox together, um, I had met him building the, the um, setup for the Talon that we showed right there behind you. And he had made me this custom manifold. And after that, 2019, 2019, 2019, he built me that manifold for that car. And ever since then, he and I, you know, we were like this. This is my brother from another. And when he came out here and showed me what he could do and he said, hey, you know, I can fab, I could do it. Just need the opportunity to show everybody what he can do. And this is exactly what we're going to do. And check this out. What we're going to show you right here is, no, we do not have the rear mounted setup with the Lexan window and the big cutout. The thing I don't like about those setups is when you're working with airflow, usually the air does not get into the actual opening when the car is sliding left or right. The fans that are inside are very important because that's what's doing most of the cooling. That's why they have 4,000 CFM setups and they need to be able to pull the air from the scoop instead of feeding the air through the scoop. That is why it works with them being back here because this is usually like a zero dead zone, especially if those guys have the wings back here. That air goes right over the top of this, over the wing, and it does not go down into that opening. That opening is simply there for the fans to draw in cold air. However, I envisioned something much greater than that, and the man, the myth, the legend, Marcus himself, was able to create the exact ideal setup for this situation. So on either side, we have two four-inch ports, right? So those of you who do not know how CFM and any type of those, um, you know, volume systems work, Two four inch ports does not equal an eight inch port. Two four inch ports is actually closely related to a 10 to 12 inch opening, which means this thing is able to move crazy amounts of CFMs because we have two ports on either side. And what that means is with the angle that the scoops are, when the car is driving straight, air is being directed directly in towards the radiator. And when the car is sliding left or right, air is still being rammed directly into the radiator, all the while being able to pull the air through there at idle and being able to cool the vehicle down. Is it going to work? You laughed at that. Yes. Of course it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to set it on fire or Jensen's going to catch it on fire. Yeah, Jensen's probably going to set it on fire. Jensen, don't, don't set my car on fire again, please. <laughs> Please don't. Did you? Did you oh, we're still cleaning up from the car being set on fire and the fire being put out with the fire suppressant while it was still on. Thanks, guys. Turn the car off next time. Anyways, so back to this setup. You have the funnel, well, the tubing that come right off of here. Marcus did a ridiculous job creating these boxes that come off of the windows. And then we have them feeding right here to this dead port. And as you can see, the radiator's right in there and the fans, there's gonna be dual fans on the backside. Now that fan in there is two times bigger than the original, two times bigger than the original radiator which is right here. That original radiator only had one little 12 inch fan on it. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a dual pass radiator. It's a great drag setup, but for doing what we needed it to do, it was never going to really work, especially with it being sat in between these hot front mount turbo setups. More of that coming soon. As you guys see, the manifolds are not here, but we're gonna update that in the next video. Marcus here has the window. Those of you guys familiar with the Fox bodies know that these windows bolt on, right? These wing windows bolt on. Shout out to our boy Jensen. You know, shout out to Jensen, Team Overkill. You know, you know how it goes. Now, on this setup, these panels, Marcus fabricated them too. So this, these panels are all able to be removed. 
I know, I know she doesn't look like much now. But when we finally get done with this thing, hopefully sometime before summer completely, as far as the interior and the exterior, you guys are going to absolutely go nuts with how crazy all of this comes together and looks out there on the track, blowing flames on either side and absolutely killing it. Sounds like they're gonna do a pull. I want to hear the sound of my people. Ah, it's beautiful. The Mopar Messiah. I appreciate it. Now, this vehicle is supposed to be done for Winterfest. It'll be done. It'll be done. It'll be done. It might still overheat, but it's gonna <laughs> It might still overheat, but it's gonna be there. So hopefully we're going to be able to go through. We still have electric pump set up that's going to be going on this thing and a bunch more things. And we have today is, what's today? The 10th. The 9th. The 9th. The 9th. Might as well be the 10th. But time's running low. I believe the event's on the 16th. The car needs to go out there. It's on the 17th. The car needs to go out there on the 15th or the 16th. Um, not Winterfest. It's called Winter Jam. Right. Sorry if I'm getting it wrong. As I said, I'm new to the drift scene. Um, shout out to all you guys being patient with us. Again, you guys know us. We're, we're GT track racers and drag racers. So the drift scene is new to us. Shout out to all you guys that have been killing it out there. Sideshow Tone and all those other guys. Man, you know what I'm saying? It's come a long way since me and my, my, my OGs and uncles. You know, shout out to Corey Grady. Uh, G. Greddy, shout out to T, shout out to Cam. You know, we used to be going dumb out there in the bay. You know, what, like these young cats are doing. Y'all doing too much, so y'all y'all ruining things. Y'all got y'all got. We we found back roads. Y'all y'all doing too much, but it's came a long way. You guys are out here absolutely killing it, and people don't realize the skill set that it takes to do that. It looks stupid. I'm not gonna lie. Every every other sport of automotive sport, it looks stupid. But the beauty in it is the fact that it's so chaotic and those guys are in control the entire time. And that takes a level of skill, of, of coordination, of familiarity with the vehicle, with the car. As you can see with the overheating issues of this vehicle, it's not as easy as it looks. So these guys really need to get more credit than they're given. And shout out to you guys in the drift scene for doing what you're going to do. And that's why we had to jump in there and have some fun. And it's overkill, baby. So we couldn't just do something normal. We had to overkill absolutely everything. So those of you guys that aren't familiar with it, go check out Jensen's channel. Go check out the content from Rob Dab Squatch. You guys will see this bad boy. It's a early 90s Fox body, full custom wide body, 6.0 LS, Holly, full Holly, um, full Holly yeah. management system, the Terminator system, full custom intercooler system by 1337. Our boy Stackhouse Marcus put that all together. Cage all redone, ready to get finalized. Full 13 inch screen. Now with rear mounted radiator setup, this bad boy is going to be killing it this season. So, Shout out to you guys for being really patient with us. I am extremely thankful that any of you guys are even watching this video. It's fun to be able to finally share with you guys what we do. I know I'm super busy with the shop. Shout out to my guys over the shop that weren't mentioned. Shout out to Jeff, Salvin, uh, Heido, Zeke. Those guys that also allow for me to be able to do what I'm doing right here with the camera in my hand. You guys remember me. I was the one underneath the cars, dirty, wrenching, and all that stuff. And I always wanted to bring you guys the content and couldn't do it until now. And you guys are finally going to get to see truly what it means to overkill everything. Peace.